I recently went to both HBO and Amazon to check out Jobs, which is the biopic that is starred by Ashton Kutcher. And then Steve Jobs, the prior one was in 2013. Then in 2015, you have Steve Jobs, which is a similar biopic on the very same person by with the protagonist or the actor of Steve Jobs being Michael Fassbender. You may remember him from his role as Magneto in, in X-Men and, and many other films. And of course, Ashton Kutcher, I know, I know best from Punked. In general, just to get right to the point, the 2013 Ashton Kutcher version is, is way worse. One thing that is slightly better, maybe, is the the mannerisms. Ashton Kutcher has this sort of gait and and hunchbacked posture when he walks around, and and maybe that's a better representation of of how Steve Jobs was. But in the Michael Fassbender version, first of all, you have Aaron Sorkin writing. You have a more limited focus. It focuses pretty much on the main launches beginning in 1984, and it goes through about three of these main product launches with him at Apple, then him with Next, and again, his triumphant return at him and Apple. The Ashton Kutcher version goes more back to the college days. Both of them talk about LSD. The Ashton Kutcher version shows a little bit of it more. Both of them show him being a very shitty person to his uh, baby mama and to his baby over a number of years and reluctantly supporting them financially after in papers publicly denouncing them or, or at least trying to obfuscate and, and make opaque the relationship between him and his daughter. The difference is that the Ashton Kutcher version leaves him as a narcissistic asshole and the, the Sorkin version with Michael Fassbender presents him in a little bit more humane light towards the end and gives him a little bit of a redemptive arc. Both of them discuss this idea of deliberation versus a single-minded kind of genius. Malcolm Gladwell has this idea that certain great men are this way because of a trait called disagreeableness, right? So the question is, is their ability to be able to think so differently, their ability to, to toss out the various superstitions and other stumbling blocks that hold back committees and all these other things from being productive, from, from making the world go round, from, from being like some of the characters that Ayn Rand wrote about in Atlas Shrugged. What is it? What is the difference between... Steve Jobs and the people around him. In the Fastbender version, uh, what's his name? Excuse me. Yeah, in the Fastbender version, he he kind of talks about this a little bit, letting um, Wozniak, Steve Wozniak, in in that version played by Seth Rogen, which is a, a more firm and a, a more kind of funny and jovial version than the Wozniak of the Ashton Kutcher version as well. Maybe I'm biased towards liking Seth Rogen and Seth Rogen movies as well. But in that version, he tells Wozniak the difference or the role of a conductor versus the, the individual technicians that are within the orchestra. The individual members, no matter how talented they are, are one part of the whole. And the conductor's role is to play the orchestra as if the orchestra itself is an instrument. And so Steve Jobs, a lot of people, you know, if, if they're thinking about, damn, it feels good to be a gangster and an office space, they might think uh, that his role as a middleman is kind of useless, but he's not just a middleman. He is the, the visionary, the big picture guy who maybe lacks the design skills of the design folks and maybe lacks the engineering skills of the engineer, but is somehow, rather than being a specialist, a generalist who is, if not excellent at those other categories, competent and competent enough to see how these things intersect with one another. I mean, you can't get around it. I, I don't know enough about the guy and I probably have to read more literature about him, but it's, it's someone I, I grew up, you know, watching on TV and, and hearing about. And I was predominantly a Windows guy growing up, but I've had like the iPhone 1, the iPhone 2, the iPhone 4S, and the iPhone 6S, you know. So now in 2020, I've had my 6S for like four years. So I've used Apple products in that term, and I've had a MacBook 
before. Uh, actually, not the MacBook. What is it called? The, the Mac Mini I've had before. So I've used Mac products, but I predominantly grew up on Windows. And a couple of times I've turned my, my Windows computers to Linux. But it's just always been interesting seeing people. I, I've always been focused on function. And a big part of the Ashton Kutcher version is they, they narrow in on this idea of functionality versus presentation. And it's touched upon in, in the fast bender version as well. But what is the function, which is stereotypically something that an engineer would think of versus how is it presented? How, what is the aesthetic pleasure or beauty of it, which is more of what a design person would think. And ultimately you need the numbers and the narrative. You need the science and the art, you need both of those. And so you need yourself a generalist who may be combative with people in uh, a deliberative role, people like the board of a corporation, people uh, like the middle management of a social justice-minded nonprofit, people like the members of your local parish council at your church. All of these people may be well-intentioned, but it's also well known and documented and said that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And so sometimes you need a powerful, disagreeable, maybe even narcissistic, big picture person to orchestrate genius and innovation. And maybe you can find some people to influence that person to be a little bit more humane, a little bit more kind, a little bit more nice and charitable because maybe there's something inherent about them that their lack of being swayed by people's opinions or feelings or emotions grants them to see things that others who are more subject to people pleasing would not be able to see. So I strongly recommend do not not watching the the Ashton Kutcher version from 2013 called Simply Jobs, unless you just want to get the full picture. And I'll strongly recommend watching the Aaron Sorkin version. And I've been a fan growing up of his uh, West Wing as well as his Newsroom series as well. And it's a lot of smaller spaces, tighter editing, and focuses on less characters. And you're just overwhelmed by the amount of dialogue, which is typical Aaron Sorkin.